everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I've got this fun little gift bag that I'm going to show you how to make. I haven't done a gift bag, I think, well, have I done one this year? I'm trying to think now what I've already done. I don't think I've done, I haven't done as many as I would like to. So anyway, I'm going to show you how to make this one. Really straightforward. This is using the Mariposa papers. So I've gone a little bit shabby chic with using this lace trim. I was kind of playing around really with this one. I still obviously love it and it's just got a velcro dot there but the one I'm going to do today I think I'm going to have the bow coming through and having a nice big bow there rather than the butterfly but again just like to show you different variations and I'm also going to make this one slightly taller but I'm going to show you because I think it was just I just cut off pattern paper and then thought actually there's no, no reason why I should we we'll just keep it a bit taller so that's what I'm going to do it doesn't fold flat just because of the way obviously this one is made so it's um I guess it's one of those ones you either like to make and display on your shelves in your craft rooms or make near to you know the time that you need it obviously because you can't you know store it flat so pop that to one side today I'm going to be using like I said that was the Mariposa first edition papers this is going to be made with the gardenia um, I showed this in my recent unboxing video this is my part of my trim craft design team package beautiful I went through and showed all the papers in more detail so I'm not going to do that today but that is what you're going to see me using more and more of over the coming weeks so I've already gone ahead and selected the papers so I've gone for this gingham lovely green here I've already prepared one half of the gift bag here so you can see and I'm using this gorgeous pearlized cardstock and just see it has got a really nice shimmer to it and it's just beautiful with all those lovely flowers over it it's not a cardstock actually it's a paper so you can see this much much more flimsy but you can see there it's the same this is the same one and I just think you know yeah if you want to reinforce the base which some of you do if you're going to put something a bit heavy in there but generally that they will be fine so you need two pieces of 12 by 12 okay so you can see how that is going to come together so yeah two pieces of 12 by 12 then you want four pieces that are one and a half by nine these are optional when we get to it you'll see but I just thought it was a nice way to bring in different kind of pattern paper so that's four pieces of them and then I've got this this you definitely need it six inches wide but in terms of length I might shorten it down I'm not sure yet but I've got it at nine for the time being and at one end I've already gone ahead and corner rounded off my edges there so first of all we are going to be scoring at so if you've got directional paper make sure it's facing the right way up now and you want to score at one and a half and three and then you want to score at nine and ten and a half. Then rotate your cardstock and you're going to score at three and that's your baseline. Okay, so like I said, that's your baseline now, so make sure that your paper was facing up the right way. Do that on both pieces of paper. I'm going to remove my scoreboard. And then you just want to go ahead and burnish all of your score lines. Now because I'm using a light paper here, this isn't going to crack. So, because now with these outer ones, I've already burnished them one way, but you want to burnish them then back that way. But because I'm using the paper, it won't crack. But you get, if you were using a cardstock, then I would rotate the score lines for those two. So do those and then flip the cardstock over and do the other two score lines like I sometimes do. Okay, so you've got your one and a half and three and nine and uh, ten and a half score lines along here along the bottom where you've got that base score line here okay so this is where we are we're going to cut down you should have two small rectangles you just see my score line there when I bend it so we've got this section and this section and then we've got that one there I'm going to cut right up this middle one so up to that first score line so up to that base score line remove this piece here like so then cut up that other score line. Okay, so you should have this tab. And go along and do exactly the same on this side here. So just cut nice and neatly, like so. And then this one. And remove that outer one. Okay, 
keep them if you want. They're quite pretty ones actually. I might end up doing something with them. And then this is what you should have. So at the bottom here you've got these two sections, your base score line there, and then these bits when they fold in will be like that. Okay. Like I said, do that on both pieces, and then with these decorative pieces here, they're going to stick over the side. And I just think that auto automatically, I think that instantly transforms the gift bag, just gives it something a bit special. So I've already put double-sided tape on the backs of mine, so I'm just going to stick them down, and obviously you'll stick all four down if that's what you're doing. Okay, so that's everything now all stuck down. So next we want to create the hole punches up the side here to have that weave effect with the ribbon. Now it is completely optional, you can just keep it plain if you want, but I'm gonna show you how to do that for those of you that want to know. So first of all, just pop one to one side, just with a pencil and ruler. Now it's entirely up to you how many you have. This one's slightly taller, so this is my nine inch strip and it's one and a half, so you wanna come in which is first of all very lightly with a pencil I'm just going to mark at seven eighths of an inch sorry at three quarters of an inch which is halfway and again three quarters of an inch down here sorry I'm off camera that come back I think my camera's dropped slightly further down in terms of angle so I'm just going to put a light pencil mark right up through the middle so that's where I want to follow now to make sure I get it all my holes nice and straight so you want to have two holes together each time and then you want to end up with one at the very top. So if I show you here, so I've got one, two together, one, two together, one, two together and then one because that's where it comes out at the top. So, okay, so you want to do your first marker at one and a half and then two and a half and then I'm just doing it in my head, so then under, yes, yeah, so then three and a half and four and a half five and a half, six and a half, and then your last one will be seven and a half. So you'll have one and a half coming down from the top and one and a half coming up from the bottom. So I'll just do them again. So I've just done a marker at one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, five and a half, six and a half, and seven and a half. Okay. You then want to do that on the other one, but you don't need to do it on the other piece because the um, we're just going to kind of sit it over the top. So I just mark three eighths, um, three quarters of an inch by three quarters. Sorry, I'm already thinking ahead in my mind of the process and the order. I just want to make sure I get it all right. So again, just coming up, starting at one and a half, it doesn't matter if it's upside down or not, so one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, five and a half, six and a half, and seven and a half. Yeah, okay. Then I'm going to use my screw punch and make sure I've got the right piece, yeah, that, that size is okay, and sit it right over the line on your marker. You want it to sit nice and even and just hole punch. You might have your crocodile or your any hole punches might come in that three quarters of an inch, so don't worry if you don't have this. But I'm just doing it for speed really. You just want to make sure that you get nice even circles. Okay. And then do the same on this side. Okay, so now I've got all my holes perfectly lined up, so I'm just going to rub out those pencil marks. There we go. Because this one's taller, that's why my circles are slightly different, so I knew what they were for that one, but I had to rethink it while I was filming. Okay, so now with your other piece, flip it over, lie this on top, make sure it's all perfectly lined up with its sides and just put a little pencil mark in those and again make sure that's all lined up perfectly because these are going to be glued together once we've cut these holes and it's easier to do them separate because if you glue them together and punch you're going through four pieces of cardstock and not everybody Will have the equipment to, to go through all that. A crocodile will be fine, this screw punch will work, but you'd be 
have to pump it a few times like so, so I'd just rather do it separate. Okay, so you can see now when you sit them over the top, they line up perfectly, like so. They look really cool, I'm really liking it. Next, I'm going to now hole punch two holes here, and I need to do that before I put it together, and that's gonna be for my ribbon. Now, if you don't want to do this part, you just add a Velcro dot at the end, and that will be the way that you fasten it. But I always like to show multiple ways of putting things together. So, with this piece here, the idea is that this is going to come down about there and then curve over and sit down at the back. So I actually think the nine inches length is, is fine. So I want to come down about, let's see what that comes up at, three inches. Oh, that's a good, bang on. Yeah, bang on three inches. Plus I can use the line here in this gingham print to make sure that I've got it nice and straight. But you just want to kind of sit that down over there. Now I want to imagine I'm going to have this ribbon here as a nice big bow. So I am going to just find the halfway mark. So I've got three inches just there because it's six inches wide. And then I'm going to come out from that about one inch. So there and there. And on those two there, that's where I'm going to punch my punched holes. So I'm coming in at two inches. Okay, so long. So it's three inches down here. So I've come down one and a half inches, come down, go in two inches and cross. And again, come down one and a half and then come in and cross at two inches. Okay, so again, I'm just going to take this away for a minute while I punch the holes. Oh, all the bits just come out there. <laughs> Good little shaky bits. And then just lie that over there. Again I can use the print so I can see that I've got it lined up. Just rub that out. Put that the side. And then I'm going to pop it back down again. And I'm just lining it up with the score lines here and here. So if I was to fold that in, for example, you can see where that sits. Okay, so it's those score lines. But don't keep it folded in when you punch the next bit, otherwise you'll punch through this. So again, I just want to make sure that I had that three inches down, which is there, so it was along this gingham score line. Make sure I've got it, because this print is playing with my eyes, so I just want to make sure that I've got it perfectly. Yeah, that's it there. My gingham line's all lined up, and then I'm just gonna pop that through there. There we go. So now I'm gonna feed through the ribbon through the back of that when we come to put it together and then it will come through here and have a lovely big bow on the front. So that's just other sequences to put it all together and to get all your kind of holes punched in the right way and everything. Now it's just the fun part of popping it all together. So if you want as well, you could put eyelets over all of these to reinforce them and there's other ways to still add even more to it. So what I'm gonna do now is decide which piece is gonna be your front. Well, actually we know my front is the one with the holes in. So the front one is gonna go down first and the back one we will stick over the top, okay? But before we do that, we need to stick this front one all together like so, okay? And then this piece will go inside. So it's a little bit different. Easiest way to do it is I'm going to use my double sided tape with a bit of glue purely because this is a pearlized paper so it's got quite a, a shine to it and I don't know how well the glue long term will actually stay stuck to it so I'm going to add double sided tape to both of these unusual rectangle tabs because usually we work with square tabs or at least yeah but it would be square if it's equal side but you know what I mean so it's a little bit different so I'm just going to Really make sure they're stuck down. Obviously use your red tape if you want. I mean, I'm sure the glue will be fine, but I don't really want to risk it. And then when I go to use this and put a nice gift in it, like a candle, and <laughs> it just falls out the bottom. I'm sure we've all had times when our supermarket bags have broken, because I know I have. It's been the favorite red wine for the night that's gone smashing, uh, smashed and then gone everywhere. Okay, so flip that over. Bring this one up and across like so. 
just kind of start to bring that in a bit more and bring this one up. And it's just the same way that you do your you know, gift boxes and bags anyway. It's just, I'm not even going to put glue. I've just realised I didn't, so it should be fine. I'm confident it will be okay. Just again, always make sure you get all your air bubbles out. You'll know you've got it nice and straight because they will just meet up the two ends there of the tabs, okay? Then, with this one here, you do the same, but this time you're going to stick these underneath, so that way, because you want that to then sit over the top of this so that when you look inside the bag you get a nice flush piece rather than if we were to put those over the top and then put it in the bag you'd have that so you're kind of putting it together slightly different so again this time still putting your tape um, no which way was I doing it so they're going on the outside so I need to flip it over this time that's right and put the tape on this way up rather than on the top side hopefully this is all making sense and you're able to follow it all like I said you know the other way I showed you by just using the velcro so you, you know you don't need to like I said even if you don't have a hole punch you might be just starting off then you won't need you can still make this bag without that so again take the backing off okay so this time you're sticking outside so bring this bit up first and then these ones over stick down stick down Okay, and then that's now going to sit over the top of that but also at the same time these will glue together as well our side pieces so first of all in this one here you can put wet glue if you want but again that's going to be that pearlized paper on top of this so I'm still going to carry on using my double sided tape but I probably will add some glue here as well just for extra strength it's a little bit fiddly to get into but you can do it now, you want to add wet glue or tape to this as well. Now I've got this red tape here, so I'm going to run right on the edges of the red tape. So there's lots of sides and kind of bits to this one, whereas usually you just it's all kind of joined, isn't it? It's all from one piece of cardstock, or there's just you know one side that you've got to stick down so this is a little bit different so yeah I'm just going to put the tape on all of these okay so those pieces are both stuck down there I'm going to take off the backing okay I'm going to pop some wet glue because this eventually will dry as well but I think it'll just give you that little bit of wiggle room now whilst that's there what you also need to do is take all of the backing off of your sides because you will be sticking that at least the bottom part at the same time as you stick the base although mm, actually no there's no reason why you have to do these at the same time at least I'm going to just leave that one because I don't actually think yeah I can fold that out so this one with those bits where we've gone over the base I'm going to stick inside I'm going to hold that one up because that's where I've got that sticky tape exposed so I'm holding let's just call them wings kind of hold them both up and push this in making sure I'm looking here under here that base is lined up perfectly and then yeah so you can don't have to stick these down I'm going to just grab a ruler just so I can get in there just initially kind of sit it down then I'm going to bring these two together and you basically want to make sure your holes line up. Don't worry if they're a little bit out because once you feed, feed the ribbon through that will actually kind of cover up if it was a little bit off but no, that's all lined up nicely. That's that one and then this one you can just unpick the backing and pop that down and again just make sure you line it up. Start from the bottom actually. There we go. So you should feel your sides are really, really strong. And the base has got obviously two layers there, but you could always reinforce it on the top now with another piece. But I'm just going to really go in there now and make sure that glue and everything's all spread out. There we go. How lovely is that looking? So next I'm going to grab my ribbon and I'm going to tie a 
double knot on the end. I mean it is at the back, you don't see it, and it does still look nice. And if you keep that kind of nice and straight like that, I'll trim it up a bit and just kind of, with a lighter, just melt the ends. That actually looks quite pretty. So, And then you want to make sure you've got your side where you've got the holes. Um, lengthwise, well, just have it long <laughs> until you've got enough to get through, because obviously um, people might want it longer in terms of the handle than I will, so once you see again what I'm doing, then it will make sense. Bring it all the way up. So yeah, see on the back now? That'll be trimmed down a little bit, but that actually doesn't look bad at all, so. And it's easier than what I was trying to do. And then you're just gonna go and weave the ribbon as if you're doing a stitch. It's just a simple, simple stitch. Just make sure you get a nice like little bit of like a ruffle there and a little bit of the ribbon showing through. Like I'll pull it out just a little bit and then under again. So every two will be together. Making sure my ribbon's the right way each time. And then when you get to the last one, it should come up the right way. Okay, so the last one there is coming out facing you, which is right, there's my hole punches there. Then you want to bring it all the way around and you're going to go in this side, you're going to go in from the top first, so it's even. And then just start weaving back through and you'll, you'll have your sides completely match up because of the way, or well, the amount of holes that we've punched and the sequence that, the sequence that we're using. Um, decide on the length that you want. So I'm going to bring it down a little bit more, probably about there, maybe there actually. Okay, and then you should end with this piece facing, you know, the other side, so it's gone in, but you can see there how pretty that looks. It's a really nice effect. So I'm going to tie this in a knot first. So when you tie it, just when you've got the loose knot like so, push the knot all the way down. Keep opening it up until you get that ribbon and that knot right down. If it's a little bit off a bit, then you just pull through those and then I'll just double that up again. Like so. And again, just cut that off. Ooh. Nice, I'll do it to about there. And then like I said, I'm just gonna just run that through with a lighter just to seal it. But actually it doesn't look, it looks quite cute, I think. And there is the bag. Isn't that really, really pretty? Next, we want to attach this piece here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna attach this front first and then stick the back down because I want to see how far down the other side I need to stick it. So this ribbon I got from um, a place called Trago Mills. We've got them in the southwest. I think we've got three or four of them. Um, it's unbranded, actually, you know, or it's a brand that isn't something I would be able to get hold of. So um, I think it was like from an old discontinue and a shop that had gone into like liquidation and stuff because they do take a lot of like old stocks so sorry but yeah you can get this the range they do lovely big thick ribbons and then I'm going to feed it through this one and that one so again I just want you to see this is what I do a lot of the time before when I'm actually making something from scratch obviously this is different to the one I've done so this is a bit of me kind of working out loud with you guys but just roughly there can you see look how beautiful it looks that's, that's the vision I had in my head I just want to get that a bit more even in the middle it's not a bad bow actually so I've just done that really quick maybe that's my that's what I should do see now I want to bring it over this side because I'm not sure how high I want the arch so this is entirely up to you now, you could go down quite low like that, or you can bring it quite high up like that, which I think is actually really nice. And that leaves me about an inch, so what I'm going to do is just flip it over, 
and I'm just going to run this tape along there and that's it, that's what I'm going to stick down. So this is three quarters of an inch. I do for good measure I will just do a strip of this just underneath. So yeah, one inch, okay, because this is quarter inch. But it's entirely up to you. You saw what I done then you can, you know you could come up even more if you wanted to and just do a tiny little quarter inch there. So stick that all down. Again I'm gonna add a little bit of wet glue to this as well, just because it is the closure. So just a little bit. I've got red release paper everywhere sticking to me and then I'm going to bring it over and I can feel this the end of it there under my fingers so I know where I need to go with it and again because this has got a nice pattern on it I'm able to line up that pattern perfectly there we go and I'll flip it over I don't want to undo my bow <laughs> I'm just going to go in from the back here and just make sure that's all nicely secure. So it's turned out way better than I thought. Let me just tidy up my bow. Actually, I'm going to do it straight. I'm quite liking these completely straight ones because what I might do is put some decorative cardstock on the ends, which you'll see in the photos if I do that. But now, look at that. It's actually quite a big bag. Now, what does that measure? If you go right up to the arch there, it's nearly, well, it's ten and a half, and it's by ten wide. So it's a really nice side, but isn't that beautiful? That is a really pretty, that would be lovely as a wedding um, gift bag. So if you're going to a wedding, you could obviously, well, even that, because there's a lot of, like, those um, barn kind of weddings and things like that. I think that would be absolutely stunning. But I know what I'm going to be doing with this and I know who I'm going to be giving it to. And there's the lovely handle and then you can undo the top. It reminds me of my backpack gift bag that I've done actually with that kind of arch there. And um, I'm really super pleased with how this has turned out. So that's that one. And there is the other one. So this one's slightly shorter just again because I was playing around. There was no reason to make it shorter. But like I said, if you don't want to do all that and you don't have maybe the hole punch to do it, then just add a Velcro dot. Okay, and you could stick a big bow on the top there and it would still look lovely, but just to show you there the different styles, but I absolutely love it. So hope you've enjoyed it. Sorry if I went on a little bit there, but I thought I'd show you a little bit more of me kind of how I work. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. And um, yeah, if you have, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.